um, you were also went to Impact mm-hmm. during yes. all this. Yes. And you were a commentator. What was your time like there? I, I love talking, bro. I got I got diarrhea of the mouth. I can talk <laughs> all day long, bro. I, 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 and when you think about this, when someone asks you to talk about the thing you love the most in this world. Yeah, you should be able to talk about it. If you can't yeah. flow with that, something's wrong with you. Yeah. So when they said, how about you go out to be a commentator and go talk about wrestling? Are you kidding me? It was like the natural thing to do. I wanted to go out there and just, I wanted to educate people on the thing, the sport, the entertainment that I loved, and that's professional wrestling. So when I was out there, I wanted to make it feel like not a wrestling show, but like Monday Night Football. Mm. Talking like it was talking to you. So when you dropped in on me and whoever else co host with it was, you were hearing two of your boys talk about wrestling. Not me talking at you, but talking to you. And, and that was one of the things I prided myself on. Um, and, and it was just, just a love I had for this business. I, I got to give back. I mean, if you can't hear the passion coming in my mouth about this love of, of wrestling from the time I was nine years old, yeah. then, then bro, you're deaf because you can't hear what I'm spitting out. You know? No, absolutely. And I actually wanted to say that earlier when we were talking about the gangsters because you were talking about having these people. And it, you have to love this to have people who want to kill you, follow yeah. you out, yeah. and still go back to these places yeah, and wrestle. Sure. So sometimes in wrestling, like, so I actually went to wrestling school mm-hmm. for a little. So they have a warning at the beginning. Do not try this at home. It's, it's a hard thing. And sometimes... Things happen. I wanted to touch on the Draz incident. Yeah. Um, he said publicly he doesn't blame you. Mm-hmm. He knows it's an accident. Can we talk a, a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, um, he, it happened in Long Island, New York, not too long from here. I, t- I hate the Long Island mausoleum because it happened there. Yeah. That's why they tore that some bitch down. Um, but um, he and I have, to this day, we're friends. So let's put that on, on, right. on blast. To this day, we are friends. We call each other. We talk yeah. all the time. Um, we've watched it back, both of us together. Yeah. And still to this day can't figure out what went wrong. And it was a running power bomb. We had done the damn thing a hundred times on house shows leading up to that yeah. night. Just on that night, on that day, something went south. Yeah. And I mean, look, that's my lowest point in this business. I, I actually quit wrestling that night. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. Once again, it's Jim Ross who called me up and gave me the, you know, gave me the the football speech and said, "Bro, things happen. Let's not let two careers end. Why don't you wrestle for two people?" So from that point forward, when I came back, I didn't just wrestle for myself. Yeah, I re- I didn't just wrestle for myself. I wrestled as well for for draws because I was out there representing him as well as as me. So, yeah. um, Lowest point of my career, if I could take one thing back in my entire life, it would be that whole night. I wouldn't even have had that match. I would have whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, it, it just, unfortunately, this is not ballet. I hate to use that that term, but it's not it's not a dance. And, and you risk, every day you go out there, you risk something. Yeah. You risk your life. You risk your leg. You risk your arm. You risk something. And we just we just had a bad night, and and it just went south. And and man, I mean, talking about the lowest part of my career, that was that was it right there. Yeah, but but for you to even be on here and speak about that and actually right. let people know, because it it takes a certain type of <clears throat> individual for you to have so much remorse, and then it takes a t- different type of individual for him to you know what I mean have forgiveness mm-hmm. even though it wasn't to because you know how that goes somebody even though it wasn't intentional right. you still go about it the wrong way you ended my career you paralyzed mm-hmm. me and to know that y'all got a relationship like not just us asking a question because it's clickbait but that's informative for the people that are wondering like yo what happened with that or feel like Absolutely. It's animosity to know that y'all, y'all have a relationship and like, we appreciate amazing. you like talking about for me I will say this he's a bigger man than me because I don't know what I would have done in, if yeah. the situation were reversed I don't know yeah, um, I don't know, but he is he's the strongest, and I'll use the term, and I love him. He's the strongest motherfucker I've ever been around in my life. For him to embrace me, hold me, tell me it wasn't my fault, and say, go on forward. I love that man. Look, yeah. Darren, I love you, bro. I love you. That's all. And we appreciate you talking about that and sharing, yeah. sharing that with us. Let's go back to some of the greatest moments, including, I met, well, maybe not for you, I met Johnson slamming you into a car. 
Why he do that? What's up? Like, who, who are you talking about? <laughs> also had him on the podcast, by the Shout way. Uh, uh, Ahmed, um, I, that was a day they got me hired. If if you go back to Shotgun Saturday Night, um, he pro plunged me on top of a Lincoln. Um, it, the original plan was for him to pro plunge me on the hood. But this is my first night in, so I wanted to make it a, you know, impact. I'm like, brah. How about we do it on the roof of this motherfucker? Let's do it up top. Because the roof will cave in. It'll look great. And literally, we did the big bump. Boom. Shotgun Saturday night here in New York City. And I remember coming back to the back. And Vince goes, come here. He didn't even know me at that point. He goes, that was awesome. And right there, about two weeks later, a contract was FedEx to me. And I got my job. Wow. Because I dropped the bump on him that he had never envisioned seeing, and I wanted to make it something special. Nah, and, well. and and that's what I, I got the I got the moniker take a bump D'Lo because it was a big bump. D'Lo <laughs> was going to take it. Yeah. If, if you think about me getting backdrop over the top of the of the top rope onto Stone Cold Steve Austin's truck, yeah, it was take a bump D'Lo. If you're going to do something, do it. And, and my 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 thing was I wasn't supposed to be there anyway, so I was going to do stuff to pay, make people remember me, make people. Recognize who the hell I was. Nah, that you did. You know, that was my thing. Recognize the world, deal. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> staying, staying on, staying on this subject. I mean, we we went off of it. It's not, you know, what I mean, it's no way to even describe it. But the good thing that I'm about to mention out of it is your relationship. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace, Owen Hart. You Absolutely. Got, rest in peace, Owen Hart. We don't even have to touch on what happened because that's been spoken about yeah. numerous amount of times. God rest his soul, his family. But when I was watching the um, Dark Side of the Ring yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, special, the story you told, even though, you know what I mean, you've told it already, I just feel like it's so iconic that it needs to just be told because it just shows the character and, you know what I mean, what type of person Owen Hart was of, like, how you guys got actually got cool. Just the second you say his name, my heart fills with yeah. joy. Like, yeah. he brought so much joy to everyone's life. I love Owen. I love you. I love you. I love you. Did I say I love you enough? Because I love Owen Hart. Um, so the story goes as I, I remember being, and I had wrestled all over the place, but for some reason, Owen and I are at this house show, and I'm particularly nervous. Yeah, I'm nervous as hell. I don't know why. Maybe it's a one on one with Owen. I don't know what it was, but I was nervous. And every time I hit Owen, it was just, it was too hard. It was, I was beating the shit out of him, to tell you the truth. Yeah. So all of a sudden, Owen grabs me, ties me up, and flips me over, puts me in a chin lock, and goes, hey, here in my ear, hey, look at your boot. My shoelace is untied. What the hell? Okay. So I tuck it back in, right? I tuck it back in. Going again, and going again, all of a sudden. Snaps me over, chin lock. Hey, look at your other boot. Holy sh! What is? I don't ever unlace my my shoelaces yeah. like this. Nothing ever. Like I'm always really professional about this. My laces are never undone. So then I tuck it back in. I'm like, oh god, I can't believe this. I'm embarrassing myself in front of Owen. Oh my god. So wrestle around again, wrestle around again. He snaps me over, grabs me a headlock. I look at both my boots. Nothing. Okay, great. He goes, hey. Look at the ref. His shoelace is untied. Like, what the? F- What's going on there? Yeah. And then Owen grabs me and chin lock goes, you relax now? And I go, yeah. He goes, now let's wrestle. And we went out there and had a banger of a match. And it was like, Owen was that good in the ring, bro. He could tell jokes. He could play a rib on you or have a five-star match all in front of 20,000 people. And no one knew the difference. Like, that's like that's how good he was. He's the best wrestler I've ever been in the ring with. And I've been in the ring with a lot of people who put boots on. He's the best of all of them. 